All right, so let's jump into this, everyone. Uh, my name is Vince, and I just want to welcome you to another presentation of NoVeg's Best of the Best webinar series. We're really excited today not only to be presenting V-Ray 1.5 for Rhino, but to have Vasil Pepelanko on board to present for us. Just a little background on Vasil before we get started here. Um, he joined Chaos Group as a 3D artist team in the beginning of 2012. Since then, he has been one of the main presenters 3D artists and creators of the V-Ray training program. He primarily focuses on V-Ray for 3DS Max. However, he has also demonstrated professional skills in V-Ray for Rhino and V-Ray for Maya. Um, he holds a V-Ray Master License Training Instructor status, so he's definitely one of the best trainers in the world, so we're lucky to have him on board presenting for us. Vassal is going to speak for about the next 40 minutes or so. During that time, everyone will be in listen-only mode, but please feel free to shoot any questions you have into the question box. At the end, we'll open it up to a Q&A, and we'll get to as many questions as time allows. We will be recording this webinar, so if you have to leave early for whatever reason, um, our recording will be made available, and we will email you links to find that. Having said all that, I want to turn it over so we can get started right away. Uh, Vassal, are you there? Yep, I'm here. I'm going to switch the screen to you and let you take it from there. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yep. You got Rhino running. Looks good. All right. Uh, first of all, hello to everyone. My name is Vasil. And today I'll present to you the V-Ray for Rhino 1.5. All right. Uh, the first thing I would like to start with is our completely new written uh, rewritten engine that we have created it's called the uh, VRT uh, we have created VRT with the uh, the thought in mind that uh, at certain areas there needs to be quite an improvement in uh, speed rendering and representation so without further I'll open the scene okay so here I have this shaving machine and I'll just click the RT button here which will automatically start the RT engine instead of the production one so as you can see it took only about a couple of seconds to render my scene I can do just about anything in my scene it will Im immediately show alright so as you can see I can zoom rotate pan do just about anything I want as you can see it uh, renders immediately so there is no wasting time in uh, setting up your scene or your uh, models, materials and uh, everything that's concerning your uh, scene. Uh, just to give you a brief example, I'll open the material manager right here. Okay. So I'll for example select the red material and okay, I'll change its color blue if I'm not satisfied with my previous color so as you can see I immediately get feedback on what I'm doing so uh, when you are setting up your scene you get instant feedback and uh, on top of that VRT is a newly fully production render engine so if you leave it long enough to clean up the noise you'll get a full-blown high quality image so I believe that's extremely, extremely powerful render engine that's unique in its own on the market right now. Uh, okay, I'll open another scene here. Okay, just a sec. Well, still Rhino 5 is in beta, so um, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. I'll open again. Okay. Please excuse me for the interruption. All right. The second scene. is uh, this uh, bike which is actually a three-wheeler okay just a little more to load the entire scene okay here it is so again 
I just click the RT engine and uh, wait okay here it is it took a few more seconds to show up and uh, here we have added another new feature to our new uh, render engine it's called the V-Ray Dome Light which I'll talk about at a later point tonight so here as you can see we have lit uh, our scene with uh, image based lightning and again I can do just about anything with my scene for example I can change my perspective my point of view and just about anything that I would like to tweak instead of waiting to re-render and uh, find my best uh, point of view and maybe materials and light setups I can do that instantly with my RT render engine so uh, for example we have, if I have um, defined that this is my point where I will be doing my final renders I can now start uh, tweaking my materials like I just showed you in the previous scene for example I take the rubber the black tires well I can make them darker for example and uh, there you go they get darker immediately another cool thing is that uh, using the this new feature the dome light very dome light I can tweak my light setup on the snap uh, again in combination with RT so here is my dome light I just selected I'll show you later how to use it and I go to the light options and uh, it actually behaves like a regular light and I can assign a texture on it so um, I'm going to click here on the map slot and um, <clears throat> we have added here an HDR let me give you a preview of what it is um, okay there you go and uh, I can actually rotate my texture as well so I can uh, find the best possible perspective and scene view that I like okay so this is another aspect of um, the new feature that we have added the RT in combination with this new uh, type of light can be very powerful very easy to set up your scenes could be in, uh, in ready mode in just a few clicks so okay I have prepared a third scene here for you to see to better understand the possibilities of the RT engine alright once again I click RT button and uh, here they are the headphones as you can see we have many blurry ref reflections in the scene and uh, usually this takes quite a lot of time to render with production renders but uh, that's not the case with RT it renders them immediately only they are more noisy at this point so if you want uh, better quality you have to wait a bit longer but uh, again you have an extremely precise idea of what your scene looks like almost immediately so one more thing I would like to mention concerning the RT is the fact that it uses the V-Ray physical camera right here so you can actually use the V-Ray physical camera to make um, your image look like photographs using uh, photographics uh, specs like F number, film speed, uh, focal length, etc. etc. Also the cool thing is that you can add uh, the effects such as depth of field, bokeh effect and motion blur. For example I'm going to add depth of field right now. Okay, You just click on, on the button and uh, right now it's not uh, very visible but uh, that's because the aperture amount is uh, really low so, so I'm going to put that to let's say 2 <clears throat> and as you can see already at the far side of my headphones it's getting blurry so my depth of field is starting to be more pronounced I can go for higher values so I can have bigger depth of field effect okay and um, the other cool thing is that I can specify manually where my distance for focus can be set so if I have 200 that means that uh, 200 units away from my camera will be the focus point so you can uh, quite easily set your uh, <coughs> scenes to look uh, far more realistic and uh, photorealistic actually 
and more probable. So okay, I have set 220, which is uh, actually uh, the focus point is uh, quite at uh, very near to the logo. So this is another very cool feature that we have added to the RT. It supports uh, just about everything that uh, the production render supports except the V-Ray Dirt shader, which uh, we are planning to add at some future point. All right, so the next thing I would like to show you is, as I mentioned, the V-Ray Dome Light. Here again, <clears throat> my shaver. I'll open. Okay, here it is. Um, <clears throat> so, this time I'll use the regular render engine. All right. As you can see, this scene has been set up. I will show you just to render up. Okay, this scene has been set up the old way. I mean, you we have used the environment map channels, and we have applied an HDR map here. You can see, and <clears throat> this is what you get out of the box. You have to tweak your <clears throat> indirect illumination options to get better. Uh, render quality. Now I'm going to do this. Okay, I have created this dome light. I'm going to create a new one so you see how to do it. Okay, I deleted the old one. And all you have to do is just click here, create dome light, and it creates immediately. So when you select it, you go to its options and here use dome light texture. Actually you have the intensity, you have the units, the color, I mean I'm not stopping and talking about these because these are all regular light um, parameters that you're quite familiar with but the interesting part is use dome texture. Once you activate it you can add a map and HDR and here it is. I will load this one let me see. All right. All I have to do is remember to switch to environment and make sure it stays spherical. And uh, okay, let's render. Oops, I'm on the wrong view panel. All right. So there you go. There are no splotches. Of course, it's not perfect. It needs to be tweaked. Maybe you can uh, lower your uh, intensity or uh, change the gamma of your HDR map. But again, there are no splotches. So there is no tweaking into your GI settings. So there is no time penalty when you rise the quality settings. And uh, <clears throat> it's uh, quite actu actually a big time saver. The reason for the, this uh, big difference between using the environment channels and using the dome light is because V-Ray, when using the environment channels, is trying to determine what's standing across our scene. And it sees this humongous texture and all the samples that are being shot from our camera and then bounced by our scene are trying to see what's there. and <clears throat> Due to the difference in intensity of our texture, the samples give different uh, intensity values, so we get the splotches. Now, that's not the case with our dome light because actually it's a lamp. So let me lower this to 0.2, for example, and uh, hit render. Oops, again, I'm sorry. Okay, again, and there you go. With just a few clicks, you get far more higher quality and far more precise image than with the environment channels. Now, I know there is noise right now, 
and uh, this noise is very easy to control. All you have to do is raise the sampling value of the shadows of our uh, dome light and uh, you will get much, much accurate result. Okay, let me show you. This 8 could be made to 24 and uh, I will draw this region for comparison. So there we go, a much cleaner result with much, much better quality. All this can be, again, be done with uh, our RT render engine. It can be activated here in this panel uh, or deactivated, all right? Or you just click the RT button. And there you go. Now, if you're going to fine tune your scene, I suggest you use the RT and uh, it, it will save you a lot of time. So there you go, you have a, quite a beautiful scene. And uh, again, as I showed you before, you can do just about anything. You can start applying your materials, tweak your light setup. All these are time savers and they're extremely accurate and high quality. quality. All right, I have uh, prepared another scene to demonstrate the difference between uh, the old way and the new dome light, light type. All right, this is an engine that we have uh, created. And uh, just we have to wait a few moments to render. So as you can see, it's quite complex scene, and it has dark areas, light areas, and um, just uh, the scene is a mess right now. And there's splotches all over the scene, and um, if you are going to raise your quality settings of your GI solution, it will give you a great penalty time. So I really don't recommend using this uh, method. Okay. Let's just all right, so as you can see, it's awful. If we're going to fix this, the render times are going to jump sky high, so I really don't recommend that. All you have to do is, all right, let me just switch to the core view. All you have to do is just create the dome light. All, uh, on top of that, the, when you create dome light, it overrides immediately the environment, so you don't have to go and uh, uncheck and uh, remove all the maps, you just create your dome light. Now, since it creates a predefined size, I suggest uh, no, uh, so it won't stand in your way to scale it up or scale it down, it's up to you. I usually scale it up. So, it surrounds your entire scene, okay? Uh, and uh, remember, size doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't matter, so you can scale it down, scale it up, it, re it really doesn't matter. All you have to do is just uh, move it away from, so it, don't, it doesn't get in your way. Okay. So now, again, I just select, go to its options, click use dome light, texture, and here, Just load it. Oh, okay, let me just see what uh, actually what texture we were using here, so I can load the same. All right. And again, don't forget to switch to environment. Check for spherical. All right. and we can start rendering so there we go
Now, as you can see, the, the difference is huge. And I'm using the same texture, only different technique. Nothing more. It's just a bit noisy, but uh, just as I said, this is easy to fix with just uh, rising the subdivision value. we can switch to RT engine to speed up the process and uh, actually that's what I'm gonna do in a few moments to show you how you can uh, change your overall look with just a few options from the uh, light uh, tab Okay, I suggest I stop uh, here because I, I think you get the idea uh, because we are on a limited time so I will stop here and uh, <clears throat> I'll lower the resolution a bit and switch to RT and I'll show you how you can tweak your overall look by rotating your texture, uh, tuning its gamma and its intensity so you will have Okay, so right here. Now, all you have to do to change your view. Okay, now our view looks like this. Okay, let's do an RT render just to have a reference. It needs a few clicks to start. It's quite a complex scene, this. I <coughs> it's the viewports that are slowing right now. Okay, maybe it wasn't such a good idea to do that. All right, I'll... Um, revert to our production render and um, then I will show them <clears throat> okay I'll uncheck Come on. this alright so as I started explaining and I showed you in the previous scene, you can rotate your texture or mirror it from uh, over here. So, okay, let's do a 90 degree rotation on the horizontal. And <clears throat> we click render. And there we go. Now, as you can see, we used to have here our burnout spots, but now they're gone. That's uh, only because I rotated my texture and I moved these intensity lights uh, to another place. So basically, you can fine tune your uh, light setup only by rotating your texture. So, there you go.
and again let's do 150 degrees for example and this time I will Okay, so here we have our region, and again, render, and you'll see a completely different mood or uh, light setup, only because, again, I rotated my texture. So there we go. Okay, enough with the dome light. I will continue now. With our new addition to the material system, it's called dispersion. Okay, so here I have two gems and uh, I click render, oops, let me deactivate this and stop it, right again. Okay, so you already can see that I have two diamonds here or I believe so, I'm not uh, really an expert in that, but they're uh, set up like diamonds. In the material system you can see that our uh, here index of refraction is set for diamonds, 2.47, and they look quite well. They're uh, again lit with our dome light, which gives this natural look to our render image, but um, <coughs> there is something missing and that's called the dispersion as you probably know the dispersion is a phenomenon of the light that when it uh, passes through object it's being split into colorful beams so all you have to do is uh, find the dispersion options here in the refraction tab and uh, just turn them on and uh, that's it you hit render and <clears throat> as you can see already, we have all these colorful beams and spots inside our object. Okay, the first one is ready. Now, the, the interesting part here is that when we uh, created the dispersion effect, the, to, to be implemented in the material system, we took into an account that it needs to be physically accurately calculated. So usually when you turn it on, it uses uh, default values that are determined based on your index, index of refraction, but um, there are many scenarios where you would want to tweak that to your personal desire or uh, certain effect you're looking after. So just uh, to show you, the, the lower the value, the more pronounced the effect will be. Okay, from 25 I go to 5, and uh, let me draw a region. So basically, the lower the value, the more strong the beams will be, and the stronger you will see them. So there you go already, <coughs> you can see that those beams are stronger. If I go even lower, they'll go even more pronounced. 
The opposite way, uh, okay, I started with 25. Now if I go 100, for example, you'll get a very subtle effect. Um, you have to find your comfort zone with this. You, in most of the times, you rely on the default settings, but uh, as I said, you might be looking after a certain look or effect, so we have provided you with the Abbey number, which will give you the control to make stronger dispersion or weaker. Okay. The next thing it will be the anisotropy. Now, uh, as you know, anisotropy is is an effect on materials in real world when during creation they are being from the machine that created the object. We have uh, microscopic scratches. Okay, again the shaver. Okay, let me turn this off. So we have added those scratches to this particular material here. I'll zoom in so you can see them better. So there we go. These are circular scratches. Now, so as I started saying, because these scratches are microscopic, there are thousands of them, and this is uh, actually not possible to be recreated with any render engines because um, the time to render and calculate will be enormous. So <clears throat> we have uh, our own solution of replicating this effect, and it's located uh, here. Okay, so this uh, let me select this and see the material. Okay, so this is my material. The anisotropy option is located in the reflection section here, over here, and <clears throat> you can control the amount of anisotropy, so basically the higher the value, the more pronounced these scratches will be seen. You can use map for that, and the rotation. <clears throat> Usually you can set your own value of rotation, but for a uh, photorealistic rendering, we suggest using maps like in this particular case. We have added this map that's been created in a photo editing program like Photoshop. You just create such gradient. I will browse to the folder so I can show you better of the map that creates the effect. Okay. Here it is. Depending on the uh, way of rotation you're looking after, you have to do the gradient at the same rotation way. So basically, you have to take into account this. In this particular case, the from white to dark is clockwise. If you want the opposite effect, all you have to do is just make the gradient the opposite way. So. Here it is, and don't forget that um, <clears throat> when you're using maps to create your anisotropy, you have to use the uh, you have to use the Z channel. Uh, actually, is right here the Z channel, and use map channel like this. So this is the normal way of using anisotropy option in your materials. Okay, so let's move on. The next thing I would like to show you is our GI improvements <coughs> in our new version. The first one, okay, again the shaver. The first one, um, you, you'll see in the snap. 
okay, many times we need to render clay, re clay renders, the so-called clay renders. Well, all we have to do is uh, render a clean image of our geometry so we know what's going on. But uh, <clears throat> when our render settings are low, we tend to use uh, tend to lose details sometimes on the smaller parts. Like in this particular case, you see the uh, losing detail here, here, and many other places. The conventional way of fixing this is raising your quality settings or just uh, uh, clicking a detail enhancement to on, and this usually fixes the problem. Let's render. All right, as you can already see, my problems are gone, but my render times have jumped enormously. So this is a solution, and as, uh, as well, you can turn this, this off and start tweaking your other options but again your render times will jump very high so <clears throat> we have thought about this and we have come up with a quite smart solution okay I'll stop this you get the point so I'll turn this off I won't touch anything and I'll just go to indirect illumination options and just turn on ambient occlusion I think you probably heard about that and uh, what this technique does is actually calculate the proximity between different objects or one object's geometry and applies more darker where they are closer together so this is the amount you can actually lower this so it actually acts as a grayscale the higher the darker the, the, the lower the value the lighter the effect gets the subdivision parameter gives you the quality settings and the radius is actually what radius from the <coughs> points will be occluded. So I have given 0.5 because we are looking at very f small details. Okay. Uh, so as you can see already, it's extremely fast. It's almost like uh, the first render I did but with all my problems gone. So I strongly recommend when uh, doing such renders, don't start tweaking your render settings because usually times will rise and uh, that's not what you're looking after. All you have to do is just check this. Maybe you need to fine tune this radius because um, I can go like 10 and first my render times will jump a bit because the bigger the radius the more cal the more calculation it will <coughs> do but uh, the other thing that will happen is my image will get darker because the bigger the radius the more dark area it will make so again it's uh, still faster than uh, the old way but uh, I'm I think you should uh, tweak this mostly for your scenes to find the best value. So okay, you get the idea. I'm not gonna wait for the entire render. Alright. The next thing we have enhanced is the retrace threshold option that we have added. Now this is an interior scene uh, render and many times when we use uh, irradiance map with combination with light cache with, which is quite the fastest solutions for interior rendering we um, <coughs> come with uh, certain problems like uh, splotches in darker areas or uh, twisted blurry reflections or as you can see here light leaks that's quite a common problem and of course mostly when people do interiors they're usually architects that don't need to know 3D software so much so they don't want to go into options and start tweaking finding the best option I'm not saying you can't fix this 
but we have added this uh, specific uh, option to fix this with just a one click. So I go to light cache options and all I have to do is click the retrace threshold. Now what retrace threshold does is first you have to give a number here which actually is again a radius that uh, determines which parts are problematic and mo most of these parts are the contact zones and what it does is actually it pays more attention to those areas and fixes the problems. For the blurry reflections, all you have to do is use light cache for glossy rays with combination with the red rays threshold. So let's see. Okay, no more light leaks and my blurry reflection is just fine now. So with just one click I fixed almost all my problems in the scene and I believe this is a very big time saver because as I said people don't need to know 3D software so much. They only use it to visualize their works so we have thought about that and we have come up with this uh, option. As I said, it determines the contact zones uh, under certain radius, like five here, and it fixes them. It pays more attention and it fixes them. Okay. The next thing I would like to show you is the proxy. Now, as of version 5 of Rhino, we have a 64-bit uh, support. Before that, there were only 32. And <clears throat> actually, the proxy concept is uh, way back when, is developed way back when uh, software were mainly 32-bit and hardware were pretty modest. So back then, in order to render a extremely complex scene with lots of geometry which exceeds the 40 gigabyte of uh, RAM limit we had to develop a system in which to pass around this limitation now what proxy is is actually we are saving our geometry on a hard drive and storing it there by replacing it in our viewport with a simplified version of this geometry this way our viewport will be far more uh, responsive in first place and in second we will render quite fast. Now why do we render quite faster than uh, the normal way? I'll explain you in a second. Okay, first to create a proxy you select your geometry that you'd like to export and you click here on this button and first of all it will ask you where to save the proxy now okay I'll call it test click save now in this dialog it will ask you several things first that, does it has to export the entire geometry as a single mesh or each object will be a separate mesh that's up to you to decide it uh, can automatically replace the original mesh with a, the simplified version that I just mentioned which is that's what we want and here you can actually set for this simplified version the preview faces triangles which will be in the viewport so I'll go with 2000 and click OK and while we wait to export I'll explain you why it renders faster than normal geometry well since its uh, proxy is a dynamic geometry which means it's being loaded only during render time and when it's loaded it's not loaded as uh, the entire geometry like it will be normal but it's being loaded only for current buckets so each bucket demands its part of the mesh during rendering and <clears throat> when rendering uh, when finished rendering this bucket it flushes the geometry and the next bucket gener uh, requests the other parts of the geometry so this is very very memory efficient 
Okay, so I'll hit render just for our exercise and I have opened my task manager to show you my memory usage. As you can see, it's uh, 1.2 gigabytes of RAM, maybe 1.3 at certain point we'll get. Okay, we're almost there. It doesn't exceed 1.3, so this scene is quite renderable on a 32-bit machine. Alright, we are done. And now we'll, what I will do is multiply, um, copy paste my mesh. So these are all proxies because I'm duplicating my proxy object within my scene. So again, I'll zoom in so you can see better. I'll lower the values here so it renders faster so we don't have to wait that longer. And again, okay. And now let's monitor our memory usage. So I have duplicated, I don't know how many, a lot. And as you can see, it exceeds only by 100 megabytes of the original, which was again with a proxy. So basically, you can render enormous amount of objects and geometry, whether it's a duplicated uh, one object or a different object, it doesn't matter. Once you export them as a V-Ray proxy, then it's been loaded only during render time and only for the current bucket. So basically, all these that we see here right now is not loaded geometry. It's just there as a calculation for our GI solution. But the geometry is not loaded. So as you can see, it won't even go above 1.4 gigabytes of RAM. So again, this is extremely useful for uh, certain scenarios or uh, working on a machine with the lower specs or 32-bit software, it doesn't matter. You can create even a forest and your uh, memory usage will be almost the same as with just a single three.
Okay, because I would like to give you another example. I'm not going to wait for the entire scene to render, but you, I think you get the idea. I uh, will stop it here. So we have time for one more scene. It's good. Okay. I like it. And uh, one more thing I forgot to mention actually is that a V-Ray proxy remembers your applied materials and as, as you saw before you can tweak your materials at any certain point. Once exported doesn't mean you lose this ability to tweak your materials. So again here we have our tree and I'll export it as a test 2. Okay. And uh, same questions, okay, I go for a thousand. And all we have to do is wait. Okay, here is my proxy. And it's uh, black because we haven't assigned any materials actually in the scene right now. So, okay, let me assign materials here. And to assign materials, so this is the proxy material system that's been automatically created for this particular pro proxy. So here we have two channels that we need to fill in with material. So what all we have to do is just create material and it will automatically be here in the list. So all we have to do is just click this and uh, here you can tweak your material. So I'll go with green since this is a tree and uh, Again, render. So here is my tree. Now, because we are loading geometry dynamically, I would suggest lowering the bucket size because lowering the bucket size means that uh, smaller portions of the geometry will be loaded at a single point, and I'm sure this will speed up the rendering process. So, okay, I will. <coughs> lower the bucket size okay here and now let's start duplicating the tree Oops. Creating the forest right there. Yep. Okay. So there we go. We have a forest, actually. And <clears throat> I click render. And let's monitor. So still not exceeding 700 megabytes of RAM and we have a very very detailed forest I must say. So when creating architectural visualizations of exterior type with uh, lots of forests, lots of uh, green stuff, cars maybe, people, benches, street lamps, etc., etc. I believe this is a uh, big game changer. Uh, your scenes can all of a sudden become quite more vivid with geometry applied. Using the V-Ray proxy system you can actually make things quite easier for you and for your machine because it will not hog your memory. Okay, I want to just wait a few more to see how the leaves look like. Okay. Well, as you can see, the buckets render quite fast now because they're smaller, so they load smaller portions over my geometry. And as you can see already, I have a small forest here at my disposal and 
my memory usage does not exceed 700 megabytes of RAM, which is amazing. I mean, what can you ask more? You can load just about anything and create it, uh, create it before as a proxy, load it, and your scene will render just fine on uh, Rhino 4, which is 32-bit only, or your machine will not allow m more RAM. So there you go. Um, I'm not awesome. sure. What's that? Uh, okay, so I think that's the last thing that I'll show you this evening because I see the time has passed. Yeah, I, I, just, I was hoping we could get into a couple of questions real quick. Okay, right. okay, I'm listening. Yeah, so cool. We'll just get to a couple since we ran short on time. Um, the first one's from Todd. He was asking, does V-Ray have any basic animation capabilities like turntable or camera fly-through? Well, uh, we are trying to implement them into Rhino at this moment and uh, definitely at uh, some future uh, moment when uh, Rhino allows us, we will add animation because animation is very big part of uh, <coughs> V-Ray. Uh, we have animation, of course, for Max, Maya, etc., etc., but uh, at this particular moment, we don't have for Rhino. Okay, awesome. Um, here's one from Miguel. He was wondering... If, he, if there's any way you could send, uh, maybe you could send me the files you used for this uh, presentation so that I could then send them out to um, some people who want to get the hold of the files you use so they can practice what you did with the actual files you, you used. Uh, I see, I see. Okay, I'm not sure I'm allowed to send the files, okay. but uh, I can assure you I'll ask and uh, I have yeah. your uh, email. So. I'll keep in touch concerning this. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I guess to answer Miguel's question, um, as soon as I hear back from Vasil, I'll let you guys know um, if the files are available. Um, but yeah, so we'll keep you updated on that. Let's get into another question here while we have enough time. Okay, okay. I'm listening. Um, does the height of the dome off of the model matter? Nope. As, just as I said, the size doesn't matter. All you have to do is make it proportional because uh, that's an actual lamp and it needs to spread light uh, equally from all, all direction above the horizon. So all you have to do is keep it proportional. It doesn't matter if it's microscopic or it's uh, humongously big. It's still the same. It doesn't matter the size. Awesome. Um, let's get to another one from Dave here. He's wondering, what about caustics, C-A-U-S-T-I-C-S? -S? Yes, yes, yes. I know caustics. We support them. I will show you the caustics options. Unfortunately, I don't have a um, scene that can show them right now. But caustics are here. All you have to do is just turn them on and set, uh, set your parameters to your desire. That's, that's just about it. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, short and sweet. That's a great answer. Um, so yeah, I think we'll have to call or end the Q&A there because we just ran out of time. Um, yep. I'm going to switch the screen over to me and give a brief send-off. Okay. Um, so yeah, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for attending. Um, and I'd like to thank you, Vasil. Tremendous presentation. I'm sure everyone out there found it as enjoyable as I did. Thank um, you. And again, yeah, thank you everyone for attending another presentation, NoVeg's Best of the Best webinar series. If you're unfamiliar with us here at NoVeg, we're the leading online design software superstore. Not only do we have the best prices around, but our staff is extremely awesome, incredibly knowledgeable. We would love for you to call and chat with us at any time if you have any questions about any software. Um, we do have V-Ray for Rhino. Um, it's up on your screen there. There is a best price guarantee on that, so if you're interested, um, Feel free to email my colleague Bob Thayer. His email is bob at noveg.com. We also carry the entire line of V-Ray products, so V-Ray for Max, Maya, Soft Image. Um, definitely if you're interested in any of those products or um, getting your hands on more information, don't hesitate to email bob at noveg.com. And then the last thing I want to talk about before we sign off here is a little online community we've created called Rhino Jungle. Um, it's basically a place where Rhino users can come and collaborate 
share ideas. We have a ton of V-Ray for Rhino users, so if your question wasn't answered, I would definitely recommend going over to rhinojungle.com and posting your question in the discussion forum. Um, the users there are really helpful. They love to help out one another. Uh, we have a ton of great um, videos and trend tutorials, events that are have, happening. Um, this webinar will also be made available there, so if you want to view it again, it will be made available there as well as an email that we will send to you guys. So having said all that, again, I want to thank you, Vasil, and I want to thank everyone for attending. Um, anything you want to add real quick before we sign off? No, just thank you for listening to me for an hour. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And, okay, that's from me. Bye-bye. Great. Thank you. Um, we'll catch all you guys next time.